The character here that is used in that conversion. And so <clears throat> let's, uh, let's look at that. Chapter 9 of the Book of Acts. Verse one. <clears throat> and Saul, breeding out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, when and to the high priest. And you know how the story goes if you've been around the kingdom for some time. Now he's blind, right? He's laying flat on his back and he is in Damascus now. Verse 10. And there was a certain disciple of, at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prays, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in, and putting his hand on him, that he may receive his sight. Now, notice here that it wasn't just Ananias who had seen a vision, but Paul has seen a vision. They don't know each other, apparently. They, Ananias does know about Paul. He does. But apparently they haven't met. And he is told to go and that Paul has seen a vision in which he sees this guy named Ananias. <clears throat> Verse 13, then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of these men how much evil he had done to, to the thy saints of Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all the call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou comest, hath sent me, that thou might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it were, and he had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. Now go back with me over to the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah <clears throat> chapter one. Nehemiah chapter one. There is another Hananias here. Hanani uh, is, is how you say it in Hebrew. Chapter, uh, chapter one of Nehemiah. The words of, verse 1, the words of Nehemiah, the son of Helkiah, and it came to pass in the month of Kislev, in the 20th year, as I was in Shushan, the palace, that Hanani, one of my brethren, came, he and certain men of Judah, and I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. And they said unto me, the remnant that are left in the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. And the wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words, that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word this morning, Father. We pray that you would anoint Oscar with a word, that, Father, that we need to hear, Father, to learn this morning, Father. Have your mighty hand upon him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now, there are here two Hananias, one in the New Testament, 
one in the Old Testament. What we have is a profound passion in both of these men. And I want you to pay attention to that. Hanani is just a brother. He's not famous in the days of Nehemiah. It's hard to have a famous brother. You get lost in the shadow there. But he captures a vision from God when he sees the broken down place and the struggle of the Jews in Jerusalem. They were all captive over in Babylon. I mean, Hanani and his brother and other ones. But he had taken this trip very much like a scouting trip as we are planning. They had shown up there and they had captured the spirit of the place. The walls were broken down. The enemies were in charge. They were struggling. And the burning upon the people of God was terrible. Every day that he walked around, more and more of that grief went into his heart. He walks back. And when he gets home, he talks to his brother, Nehemiah. Nehemiah was working for the king. He was well positioned. And that conversation was epic. It produced the book of Nehemiah for us. It brought a man out of his, his lumber and put him in position to be great in the kingdom. Nehemiah heard the passion of his brother. How did he describe it? What captured the heart of his brother, Nehemiah? They were blood brothers. There was a transferring of passion. <laughs> How are they back home? He was asked. And in a few words, he described to him, the walls are broken down. People are hurting. The sick and the broken, the orphans, the widows. As he was coming through him as a vessel, as he had been cooked in, in, in that trip, he transmitted it to his brother. And the passion was captured. Nehemiah was so stricken by those words that he lay almost sick physically. Months of prayer and weeping and crying in the presence of God. That conversation had told him that whatever he was doing did not matter. Had put his life on a balance. See, you don't have to be a preacher and stand behind a pulpit to impact the world around you. Passion, when you capture the passion of God, when you capture the heart of God, you can impact the whole world. Amen. The reason we have that in this scripture right here, the reason we have the book of Nehemiah is because passion got a hold of that man, Hanani, his brother. Had he come back and he said, yeah, well, let's have some struggles in here. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for them. No book of Nehemiah. No Nehemiah broken down. Nothing. The great revival in the days of Ezra, just before this, had come that way. Ezra had come into, the, into Jerusalem and saw all the struggle and saw all the sin. And he lay down in the square, in the main square, and started pulling at his beard and pulling at his own hair and crying out to God and said, God, why are we so messed up? Why are we such in sin? And he cried so much in the presence of God. People came to check out why he was crying. And those who love God, the Bible says, began to cry themselves because they were stricken by the passion of one man. Yeah. Not only that, the people who had nothing to do with God, who were wishy-washy, began to see a whole crowd crying, came out and began to be stricken by the passion of those who were weeping in the presence of God. And revival broke out in the land because of the passion of one man. Yeah. So stop whining about the people who are struggling and the ones who don't want God and the ones who are out there and the ones who are broken and the ones who are sin and uh, sin and the ones who are full of drugs. Stop crying about it on that sense. But get a passion for God inside of you because he's the one who can fix it. And no one is going to change those things unless you come to the Lord with a passion in your heart. Yeah. I come to the Lord with a passion in my heart. 
It will strike the fear of God upon people. It will cause them to understand how little they know or love God. Amen. You don't have to cry from the corners. You don't have to preach it from the pulpit. You just got to live in a passion for life. It's a guy named Ananias who's sitting in Damascus. He's heard that there are trouble coming their way. An evil man named Paul is coming to attack them. He had already killed and imprisoned people. He was the nemesis of the church, that guy. And Ananias is sitting in the middle of Damascus. God appears to him in a vision. And he says, Paul is laying flat on his back somewhere in this town. He has seen in a vision that you, a guy named Hananias, is going to show up here, here on his side. And you're going to lay hands on his eyes because he's blind. First of all, I got to tell you something. You see no visions of God unless you're close to God. Let me say it again. It was, a, it was born out of a relationship between Hananias and God himself. When you see visions and you don't have that kind of passion, what you see is judgment like Paul. What you see is struggle. But in the prayer that he was seeking God, Hananias felt God, saw God. Saw the vision of God. He had a relationship with God. It was John the Revelator who said, In the day of the Lord, I was in the spirit. You know where he was? He was in an island called Patmos, somewhere where they go, like very much like Australia, the worst of the worst of the criminals in the past. They went and dumped them in, Pat in Patmos. And that's where John was. And you know what he got out of there? And his passion and his desire for God. In the day of the Lord, no preachers, no offerings, no amen, no nothing, not even another brother as far as I know. And yet he got the book of Revelation. Passion will do that for you even if you are alone. Yeah. Passionate. And Ananias wrestled with God that day. He said, that's an evil man. He's come to destroy us. I've heard what he's done to our brethren in Jerusalem. And he's coming breathing evil against us right here. And God says, don't say that. I know what he's going to do. I got him as a chosen vessel. Get up. See, he didn't go to Paul and tell him, Paul, you know, I was really praying for you. He said, no, I was praying against you. But he didn't tell him that. I wouldn't either. <laughs> he just walked in there and he said, brother Paul. He called him brother. He wasn't even a brother yet. He may be a couple of days old in the kingdom. And he said, God send me. And when he lays down, why would God use a man like Ananias? Why? We don't need him in the story. We already have all that we need in the story. We have Jesus. We have Paul. We got a vision. Why do we need Ananias? Because Ananias had that passion, that relationship. That desire, he was the representation of the established church that had already known God and was paying the price for it. And that man laying down there was a baby Christian, just one who started going. And Ananias come to say something that Paul doesn't know. You will suffer much for the kingdom and God will use you mightily. See, in that what you have, when you see a great book, when you see a great preacher, when you see a great ministry, don't you go and say, wow, you know, so-and-so did it. No, no, no. There are little people or people who are of, of apparent no consequence around those things. And you find them when you know that God had to use them as the wheels that got Paul going. Yeah. Barnabas on one side and these other men right here. And Ananias is right there in the beginning to install passion to say, I have been with the Lord and the Lord has given me a vision. God, the what? not only that, he told him exactly what Paul had seen. You've seen God out there. You, the Jesus that appeared unto you and described it to him. Paul had to be confirmed that what he had seen was not just a vision because he ate pizza too late. That God was talking to him. And through the mouth of this Hananiah, he transformed the environment. And Paul gets up from the hill to be the Paul that we know. Yeah. Passion, brothers. A passion this church can change nothing. 
Let's go to church and you drag yourself there. Let's go to prayer. Barely able to do it. As worship leaders, they might have had an encounter with God and they stand behind a congregation and most of the people are asleep. Don't even want to spend the time to learn the songs. Preachers prepare these sermons, good preachers anyway, and spend hours and hours and hours and by the time they get up, 80% of the congregation is clocked out. But rather than give up, worship leaders, and rather than give up, pastors and preachers, rather than give up, fathers and mothers, just become passion-oriented people. Amen. Burn with fire inside yourself that the challenge will go out. There will be the Paul who's going to pick it up and run with it. There will be the Nehemiah who's going to pick it up and run with it. What did you do, Hanani? What did you do, Hananias? Nothing. All I did was love God with everything I had and be passionate about what God gave me. Not the emotion of it, but the burning heart that wakes up in the night and says, Jesus, even if things are falling down, I'm still going to love you. There is something about being around people who have passion for the Lord. It's convicting. I've had it. This trip is for the young men. One day about 4 a.m., I woke up to go outside to go pray. And I saw him across from where I was into another place, sitting with the light of his phone, reading his Bible. Young boy. Struck me. It brought all these memories back. I remember being that guy. <clears throat> Passion. Later on that day, I turned toward him. And I said, bro, come here. I'm the one who's supposed to preach. You preach today. He's not a preacher. He freaked out. He's like, what? What? He should have given me several months in advance. I needed to get myself together. I said, you got about five minutes before I call you out there. <laughs> and he's like, oh my God. And he got out there. I can't tell you that he gave you this, this whole, you know, no, no, it's, he didn't. But when he opened up his mouth, <laughs> the spirit of God fell upon the place. Amen. Mm -hmm. See, I knew what that was. That was Hananiah. His passion was ignited. He did not know that morning that I was going to set a trap for him. Neither did I. But I know passion when I see it, the right passion. Young people came over. One wrote me last night and said, so, who is that young boy that spoke? I told him who it was. You know what that is, this young boy told me? Today, he said, I was ambivalent about the ministry. I'm giving my heart to the call today. That boy did it. He doesn't know. But that's what Ananias does. You don't have to be a preacher, brothers. You just got to have passion. Yeah. And burn with passion. And I don't mean yelling and screaming like me. That's not passion. That's just yelling and screaming. <laughs> you don't have to sweat to be anointed. <laughs> but pray. Seek God. Yeah. And in the quiet places of your life, when you are growing in passion, you will affect this world in ways you don't even know. We're going to know out there. God bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.